I'm Andrew Joseph Keith, and in this lesson for the Portrait Sculpting course, we're going to be going over how to build a stand or armature for your portrait sculptures. This type of armature is pretty straightforward and it's pretty simple, just a piece of wood and then some hardware with a piece of pipe coming out of it. The hardware is a metal floor flange, that's this part that allows you to screw in to the board and then screw in a piece of metal pipe into that floor flange. Simple plywood boards work great for this type of armature. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, let's get into how to build it. As far as materials, you'll need a baseboard, a metal floor flange, a pipe that's the same size as the metal floor flange. For this example, I'm using a 3 quarter inch floor flange as well as a 3 quarter inch pipe that's 8 inches long. You'll also want some metal hose clamps that are a little bit larger than whatever type of pipe you're using, some screws to screw the floor flange into place, some aluminum wire. For this one, I'm using a thicker 8 gauge aluminum wire and some newspaper or butcher paper to fill in the inside of the armature. Masking tape can also come in handy to wrap around the paper to keep it in place. For this stand that I'm building, I'm using several sheets of plywood that I've glued together and then stained black and added a polyurethane finish to protect the base, and I think this just looks nicer. For tools, I'll be using a ruler, a screwdriver, and some needle nose pliers with wire cutters. To assemble this armature, it's pretty straightforward. Take the ruler and draw a line from corner to corner from each corner of the base, creating an X shape that will give you the center of the wood board. Then take some number eight screws that are half an inch long and screw the metal floor flange into place. Then we can twist the pipe on top of that floor flange so it's nice and snug. Next, we'll take some wire and bend it out in a rough head shape. Because I'm doing this one life size, I'm just gonna take the wire, wrap it around my head, and make it a little bit less than that. Once we have this loop in place, we can cut off the excess wire so that there's about three or four inches of wire extending down the neck. We can do the same thing with another piece of wire from the front, holding the wire at the back of the head, then pulling the wire to the front of the face and then down the chin, making a bend at the chin. Next, we'll take the metal hose clamp and those wires and place the hose clamp on the pipe and then feed the wires through. If you want the wires to be a little bit more snug, you might consider using two metal hose clamps. Try to have the wires spread out around the pipe. Next, you can put the metal hose clamp on the pipe and then feed those wires through the hose clamp onto the pipe. Something that'll make this a little bit easier is if you take those wires and then tape them into place with masking tape first and then lift up the hose clamp and then tighten it into place because with the loose wires, they kind of shift around as you're trying to tighten the hose clamp and it was just kind of a pain. Once the wires are in place, we can use a knife or a screwdriver and make sure those wires are really secured onto that pipe. I also made a little dip at the top of the head to try to get the wires to stay put. Here's what it should look like at this stage of the process. I also like to wrap a little bit of wire around where the wires meet at the top of the head and this keeps them from shifting around too much. Now I'm gonna add some additional wire to give a little bit more support around the armature traveling horizontally. To do this, grab a section of additional wire, take the needle nose pliers, and pinch the end of the wire tightly and twist the pliers to create a tiny loop in the wire. We want this loop to also twist down slightly so that the tip of the wire doesn't come back and hit the tail that extends outward. This is what it should look like. We can then place that loop around the section of the wire armature at about eye level or half of the way from the top of the head to the bottom of the chin and use the pliers to tightly clamp the loop we created so that it wraps snugly around the wire. Then feed that section of wire over to the next part of the armature and twist it around until it's tight. Then repeat the process for making the loop at the end of the wire that doesn't close on itself. Now we'll wrap it around the wire that runs down the front of the face and there we have it. And we can repeat this process for the other half of the head with another section of wire. Here's what the armature should look like at this point, with those wires giving a rough indication of the size and shape of the head from the front view and from the side view. Okay, now it's time to fill the armature with something. To save on clay, I like to fill it with old newspaper or ads or whatever this is, 
as well as some brown butcher paper and masking tape. To do this, crumple up some newspaper and place them inside of that wire armature. And as you're shaping this, you can make it kind of a simplified head shape. Then use some masking tape to keep the paper in place. You can also use some masking tape to indicate where the wires are underneath the paper. But remember, you want everything to be thin because it's really easy to add widths and thickness with clay later on. Some tape around the base where the pipe is, as well as just around the sculpture, will help keep things in place. And here's what it should look like when you're finished building this life-size armature. This armature works great for oil-based clay, like the clay I use, but you can also use it for natural water-based clay or polymer clay and other types of clay. If I was gonna use this armature for water-based clay or natural clay like terracotta that's a lot less expensive, then I would take a thick plastic bag and wrap it over the armature and then tape it down to make sure that no water gets inside and starts to rust the pipe and hardware that we have inside the armature. Now you can use this same method for building smaller armatures. Remember, I recommend for the self-portrait sculpture assignment to go a little bit smaller than life-size because a life-size sculpture takes longer to develop, a lot more time investment, and it uses a lot more clay. I would do it about half to three quarters life size. Now you can also just use the metal floor flange and metal pipe. For this one that is about three quarters life size, all I used was a metal floor flange and a metal pipe and then started adding clay directly to that. And this clay, it's oil based, it's fairly soft, but it's worked great and I haven't had any issues with it shifting around. So if you wanna skip the part where you add the wire framing inside, you can do that, that's what I did with this one. But if you prefer to have a little bit more structure, then you can add those wires inside. In the premium course, I'm gonna go over a couple other methods that you can use for building a stand or armature for your portrait sculptures, including a stand that's made entirely out of wood and a stand that you can use with polymer clay so that you can bake your finished portrait sculpture in a normal oven and then you have a finished work of art. So if you want the full premium course, be sure to go over to proco.com slash portrait sculpt and get it today. Okay, that's it for this video. Your assignment, go build an armature for portrait sculpture and start your self-portrait sculpture. If you haven't seen the video on my 10 steps to a successful portrait sculpture, you can check that out here. Thanks for watching. Stay creative, stay productive. I'll see you in the next video.